If you're different, that gives you a lot better top of the mind awareness. And that's something that I didn't even know six years ago when I started saying I was number one in referrals. I didn't know how much that would explode my business. Yeah. And to give you a point of reference, last month I sold 24 cars. Uh, 11 of those were repeat customers. 11 or uh, 12 of them were uh, referrals to me. And then I had one fresh up. So I literally said 23 my- out of 24. I literally sit at my desk and play on Facebook and just follow up with people. And my friends are like, you talk to so many people on Facebook. It's way easy. People just come in and ask for me. It's easy. Yeah. Now, 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 your weekly dose of inspiration, inspiration. Perspiration. perspiration, and just the right amount of bull defecation. Ah! The Get You Some Radio Show with your host, the vice president of Making Shit Happen, Terry Lancaster. Greetings and salutations. Welcome to the Get You Some radio show. Now, a lot of the things I talk about in personal branding, I talk about the components of personal branding being your reputation and your relationships so that you can use those things to get more reviews, more referrals, and more repeat business. Today's guest is the king of repeat business, number one in sales and referrals at the Jefferson City Autoplex in Jefferson City, Missouri. We're going to be talking about getting more referrals and networking in the local community with Nathan Hayes right after this. Make more friends, sell more cars. 97% of car shoppers say they would prefer to know their salesperson before they ever set foot in the dealership. People buy from people they know, like, and trust, and they refer their family and friends to people they know, like, and trust. Visit terrylancaster.org to learn how your sales staff can get more reviews, more referrals, and more repeat business by building better, stronger, more authentic relationships online and in real life. TerryLancaster.org. Nathan, my friend, how are you, brother? Hey, Terry, how are you? Thanks I'm, for having me. I'm fantastic. Thank you for taking time. I mean, this is your day off, right? You're not selling cars today? <laughs> no, it, it is. I'm definitely working today, but that's good. I got a working, working lunch going, so we are, well, we're good. I'm off well, on Thursdays. I, if anybody has a are I'm off on Thursdays. I, I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. And like I said, Absolutely. yeah, we, we've been connected on Facebook for a little while. I'm connected with a lot of folks. I kind yeah. of keep my eyes on what's been going on. And, and I always see you talking about being number one in referrals and getting referrals. And I yeah. see the activities that you make with the, the customers yeah. and the stuff that you're doing. So I wanted to get you on that and really ask you one, one question. How do you get so many referrals? Well, I think it all starts with taking care of the customer, uh, having a good follow-up process. You know, mine isn't perfect or flawless or, you know, invincible, but my customers know that, you know, they can find me on, I had a customer the other day, they got a new phone and they're like, I just Googled your name and found your phone number real quick. You know, back in the day, everyone was afraid to give their phone number out, afraid to give their email address out. Now it's like a kind of a calling card. So yeah, I try to be readily available for my customers. I try to let them know that I can schedule service for them. If they have a titling issue or different things like that, I don't want them to I mean, I want them to, but they don't necessarily have to call into the dealership and get passed around through the operator system and whatever else. I just would rather say, hey, if you have problems, uh, you know, call me directly. Yeah. And I do that a lot online. I'm in some Facebook community groups and, and I get tagged and, you know, maybe someone didn't buy a car from me, but they need, you know, they're trying to get an update of their service uh, where their car's in the service drive and they can't get a hold of anyone, no. you know, I'll take that call or message that person, walk back to service, get them an update that way I know. And then, you know, as crazy as that is, I may sell them a car in two or three years because they remember that I took care of them. Just people, if they have a complaint or an issue, they just want to be acknowledged. Yeah. And, and so I, I know that from all the research and reading I've done in the last five or six years. And so yeah. I just try to, if anyone has any problems, uh, you know, they come into the dealership, they have a problem, they need a vehicle. So, I'm okay. just trying to be a problem solver and to make sure they have a good experience and they have a good enough experience and I'm a good communicator. Then typically they send their friends and family and coworkers to me. So I just built that on a brand. Yeah. So this good, but this is an ongoing process. Like you said, they might come in and, and need an oil change and, or need to find out what their car's doing. And you talk to them and sell them a car two or three years later. Two or three years is, you know, it's a pretty good while. How, you, and you talked about the importance of follow-up. How do you follow up with them? How do you, how do you stay on top of their mind? So this is uh, something that I've always done. I, anytime 
time anyone has a trade in or buys a vehicle, obviously you always have the VIN number. So I always try to run Carfaxes on cars. So if I call a customer, um, some people just fire off, you know, 50 calls if they can. Right. I try to be a little bit more methodical. I'll pull a Carfax. Then I can tell a customer if they have an open recall or, hey, I noticed you haven't used your, our service drive in a long time. I want to invite you back or maybe you're having trouble getting here. Can I give you a ride or offer you our shuttle service? So little things like that where I'm educating people of the process. Yeah. You, you do what you you do every day. I do what I do every day. My friends who are realtors and attorneys and bankers, they know what's going on. The consumer, when they walk into our dealership or they buy a car, mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many people I've sold a car to and they'll call me after three or four months. Hey, when do I get my oil changed? Right. Well, if you open your owner's manual, it tells you, but they just want, they want my, they trust me. They like me. Um, you know, so they call, they want my opinion. And I tell them, you know, Hey, you can do the 3000 mile old school way, or you can go up to 5,000 miles, but this yeah. is what I recommend. And, and if you want to follow the recommended maintenance schedule, a lot of people do, it'll help maintain your vehicle for many years to come. It's also in your glove box. Oh yeah. I forgot, you know, they're embarrassed or right. they didn't know, or they had, you know, it's a single or a widow and they just, if for the first time in their life, they had to buy a vehicle. So I just try to give them a peace of mind that, I'll answer any of their questions. People call me, hey, I got a stupid question. You know, um, how do I register my car? Or, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, people just don't know. You can go online and Google it. I had someone call me the other day and ask me for the store number. Yeah. Which they had a smartphone. They could have just Googled it. But instead, they right. called me and asked me what the store phone number is. So it's easy for me to complain or think that that's a waste of time or be annoyed. But instead, I just smile and, you know, <laughs> I, I just want to be there and help help my customers. I don't see, I don't see any way. And it's sometimes it's other people's customers. Yeah. I don't see any way possible. That's a waste of time. They don't need Google. They've got, <laughs> you've replaced Google in their lives. That's, that's how powerful. <laughs> yeah, not yet. <laughs> yeah. So they, if they're looking for you and I mean, so they're looking for you to solve their problems because they get problems that need to be solved. And when you solve that problem, you become, you know, their go-to guy. They know a guy in the car business. And then when they're talking to their friends, and they ask them about their guy in the car business. So they're talking about the, your, your name's got to come up because you're, you're the guy they're thinking of. Yes. People, you know, they'll make a social media and I'll get tagged. You know, if I know some other guys in town, will get tagged on posts. And then, you know, I just say, if you had a good experience, can you chime in on, can you give me, and then I'll have, you know, next thing, you know, 10 or 15 people all recommended me. And if, you know, so and so's looking for you sitting for fifteen grand, and my name gets mentioned twenty times, and everyone else's name gets mentioned once or twice. Right. Hopefully, I would hope that you know they would, and and that's that's about building a brand on social media. Uh, we have four locations, so one issue that I've had over the last seven years is people would go to different stores, or they wouldn't know which which location I worked at, and so. Over the years, I kind of developed the tactic to make sure that people would ask for me at every store. I explained to people, hey, you're going to send in an internet lead. You're going to put your information in online. And it's going to go to our business development center, or it may get sent to someone else. When someone, someone will, because it's their job, contact you from our dealership, just make sure you let them know that you want to work with me. And if you don't want to work with me, hey, that's cool. Or, you know, if you want to buy a car somewhere else and then you want me to help you pair your Bluetooth, uh, you know, I can do that too. I, I I love to, you know, earn your business and, and make money and feed my family. But at the same time, you know, I don't always have, you know, what people want to. And so I learned at an early age or early in my career that I like to give referrals to people too. Right. If someone comes in and says, hey, I want to buy a new Toyota. I, I can't sell them a new Toyota, but I know eight guys that can. And so I think that that says a lot about someone's character when you're not afraid to, you know, refer them to somewhere else and it's not you know i can argue and say my product's better than theirs or their product's not as good or whatever but i just think doing the right thing instead of putting down the competition i think that that speaks volumes as well because i know i'm not going to sell every single person every single time that, that's just kind of naive to believe that and it's not even a question of better or worse it's just what's right for that customer and maybe what's right, right. it just happens to be me what they want i mean you may you may have right. a car that's almost just as good but if it's not exactly what they want you, you, you know right. you're to sell them into buying something else you so you have to work with work with what you've got now one of the things you right. do um you're so you talk about social media is you do a lot on social media that's completely unrelated to the car business you're building a network of friends the lawyers and doctors and people in the community who are who, who, who know who you are and don't have time to yeah. search around. You're building this 
but a lot of times not even talking about the car business, just going out, doing things, being a member of the, you know, the Jefferson city community. Yeah. I, you know, and I, I go back to people are afraid of sales or they're afraid of salespeople, but at the same time, I think uh, someone who's, you know, pretty educated realizes that basically everyone's in sales. And I always kind of tell young people this, you know, whether you're trying to let your parents let you go to the movies with your girlfriend or, you know, you're selling someone on something to go eat fast food instead of eat at home or mom, can I get a soda tonight instead of drinking water? Like the last 18 times we've been to pizza hut or whatever, that's a personal, personal right. story of my own. Um, so <laughs> good for I you to drink you know, the water. Good for you. <laughs> yeah. Well, soda is expensive now. So <laughs> no good. So I, I, I think of like, um, uh, you know, everyone says, oh, find your target market, find your target market. And then, of course, everyone, want, everyone wants to sell everyone and you want everyone to be your customers. And that's not necessarily at work. So, you know, uh, I decided when I got into the car business, you know, I could have gotten into insurance. I could have gotten into real estate. I couldn't have gotten into a couple other things. But I knew 10 people that were realtors and 15 people that were insurance agents. And when I thought about it, I didn't really, you know, before I said yes to this job, I didn't know a lot of people that sold cars. So I thought, oh, this would be easy. I'm not competing against any of my friends. I can build a name for myself. I'm young. You know, at that point I was unmarried, didn't have kids, didn't have a lot of bills. So I, I knew I could work my way into a lifestyle. And then my goal, obviously, to give myself a raise every year. And so I think when I decided to, you know, have my one hobby as my stepdad says, you know, you have a job, you have your family. And then he always says, pick one hobby. So my one hobby, you could say is networking or, or volunteerism it sounds a little bit more glamorous, Yeah. but I really like to give back to my community. And, and I think, you know, my community in Jeff city, just like uh, Columbia 20 minutes away or St. Louis, two hours away or Springfield, another two hours away each of them has uh, different needs and, and they need uh, a lot of times, a lot of communities for anyone who's watching out there need young people to step up and be, you know, the next leaders. And so when you I think of like all those little TV shows uh, where like the old school, like car lot guy is like running for mayor or whatever. So like in my hometown, our old older uh, Ford dealership guy, he just got, asked to be the state lieutenant governor. So yeah. everyone always asks me, hey, are you going to run for politics or when are you going to be mayor or when are you going to be on city council or school board or whatever else? I'm sure at some point I will be uh, doing that, but I, but I try to take one one focus at a time. So right now I'm working on a campaign for internet sales tax and that can be dicey to people because it's a tax and some yeah. people don't like taxes and different stuff like that. But I think uh, based on my personal education and, and research, that it's a, it's going to be a great revenue generator for the community. And it's something that we need. And eventually I think nationwide is it going to become a topic and a, a law anyway. Yeah. Uh, so let me, let me ask you this. Cause a lot of people, I mean, and, and, and myself included, I, if I'm talking to people, I steer them away from talking about politics on Facebook. Now, mostly I'm talking about national yeah. hot button politics that people are going to get into fist fights over and, and call each other, you know, the stupid crap that goes on on Facebook. You don't see that quite as much about local politics, but sometimes yeah. you do. Uh, politics here in Nashville can get dirty sometimes. Um, really? So, oh yeah, I believe it. Yeah. So, so, you know, how does talking about politics affect you? I mean, you got to sell, you got to sell cars to both sides. Well, so like I got called out in the local newspaper this morning at seven o'clock in the morning, I guess on some an opinion section. And it was someone who is in general, they're just anti-tax. And so right. uh, the stance that I'm taking, uh, the reason that I chose to be on this campaign and help run this campaign is it's going to benefit local organizations and local businesses. So if yeah. you like to shop local for a use tax, you're already paying a sales tax, yeah. which is actually higher than a use tax. If you like to shop online, that's okay with me. I shop online all the time. Uh, I try to buy something local if I can, if I can't find it, or if I think I can get it quicker or something I need, then of course, like anyone, I would expect any consumer to, to shop online or, or wait two weeks to, to right. order it into a store. Yeah. And so I don't, choose very divisive uh or like crazy events i was on the, um, uh i was the campaign co-chair for communications for a second high school in our hometown right i think you know john q public you'd ask them do we need a second high school and they would say i mean my friends in st louis kansas City, springfield were like hey man when is jeff city gonna get a second public high school they've needed one for 30 years i'm 33 
Yeah. So if someone has t- tells me that we've needed a second high school for 30 years and I hear it over and over and over in the community, um, you know, yes, our property taxes went up. My house payment went up $80. That stinks. Uh, I can afford it. Some people in our community cannot afford it. Uh, selfishly, people that cannot afford an $80 property tax increase probably are not my customers. Yeah. Um, but, you know, that that's, and that's, extremely selfish of me to say, but it's just one of those things. I thought and, and our community felt overwhelmingly that that was the right decision for our community. So, so let me, let me ask you this. When you're, when you're out, when you're at these community events, when you're, when you're working on these campaigns and you're meeting with people, you said you got into the business uh, and we, we'll talk about how you got into the business, but you, when you said you got into the business because you didn't know any other car dealers, uh, you right. see, or any car salespeople, you do insurance people. And, you, and when you go to these yeah. networking meetings, when I do, uh, when I go speak at the Rotary Club or something like that, yeah. I see a million insurance agents. I see a million yep. mortgage brokers. I see a hundred uh, real estate agents, but I've never- and not- a lot of them are new. So, you know, my thing was, and I'm sure people thought this five years ago with me, how long is this dude going to come to these meetings and actually been in the car business where I meet new insurance agents and new realtors all the time. Yeah. Uh, all, you know, over and over. And so it's kind of like, you know, I've been in the game, I feel like long enough. So it's just one of those things where I think sales in general has high turnover. So I thought, well, heck, if I build a name for myself, I stay in the same spot. Uh, people know that they can count on me. You know, I think that's good. And so really up until about a year ago in Young Professionals, it was me and one other car guy. And, and yeah, right. in people Jose. I work with, people, yeah, people I work with knew know what I do works. They yeah. see my name on the board or in a magazine or winning an award or whatever. They know that it works or I don't know if they're just intimidated or, I mean, some people are afraid to tell people they're a car salesperson. I, I rushed a fraternity in college. I did mm-hmm. not stay in it, but I heard over and over and over from people, Oh, Nathan, you're too nice to be in a Greek organization. And right. I was like, I mean, being in a Greek organization is not going to change me. Same with the car business. People, oh, you're way too nice to be in the car business. I'm like, being in the car business has not changed me at all. I don't lie to people. You know, I still have moral high ground and and, and take the high road. And, I, and I'm not afraid to tell people they shouldn't buy a car. So so, so how, uh, did, how did a nice guy like you end up in the car business? <laughs> well, I went to school. I graduated, uh, moved back home, vowed to never move back home to my home <laughs> town. Uh, Jeff City is a growing. Where, where'd you go to uh, school? Has a growing, uh, went to Halias High School, and then I went to Southwest uh, State University, which is now Missouri State University. Missouri. I actually worked for the Alumni Association when I was there, so we yeah. got to work on the name change, and then we got to call – alumni nobody believed that the name actually changed they thought it was a prank call <laughs> so we had to tell them that their um you know diploma was still good but i did get to fundraise with the university so i heard no a lot i mean i i worked at the university people were willing to donate thousands and thousands of dollars athletics and not a lot of money to their educational uh, organization that i feel like you know put those people on the map so that's kind of always been like a kind of personal vendetta in my life is that yes, athletics are important, but I think education, yeah. especially as the college system changes are very important. So I think it's, I think it's very important to give back where you came from, whether that's your hometown, whether that's your, uh, where, where your alumnus from, uh, I think that that's very important. So I give back to my grade school, my high school, my college. I try to be nice to all those teachers that are still there and around and, 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 you know, make sure that, that they're doing good. So, and you, but when you graduated, you, you didn't have a job. Yeah. Well, I, I, I had worked for the city for 10 years off and on yeah. part time. Um, the city uh, parks and rec department in our hometown, shout out to Jeff city parks and rec is great. They have a lot of loyal, long tenured staff. So they did not have, uh, you know, I like to say they did not have it in the budget to create a position for me. Yeah. Um, because they haven't created a position for a long time. So I didn't have an opportunity to work full time with them. I could continue to work part time, but uh, you know, I wanted something better than that. So I, I did a little bit of work there <clears throat> too. And I worked at American Eagle and I substitute taught sub, you know, was a substitute teacher and did some stuff like that. And then I just kind of applied for jobs. I think I probably applied for 30 jobs. I have a spreadsheet that's saved <laughs> on my computer. It's like one of those things you look at, you know, and just yeah. I walk into Lowe's and think, man, these guys should have hired me eight years ago, but they didn't. Right. So that kind of chip on your shoulder. Um, so yeah, I applied, I'd say probably 30 to 40 jobs. Nobody called me back. I followed up. 
people were like blown away that I was following up with them because I was like trying to be aggressive and get a job and yeah, um, ran in. It's, met it's some amazing people how people know commerce. Them. Yeah, met some people through our local chamber of commerce through young professionals and stood up in front of a room of probably 200, 150 people and told them I was unemployed with two college degrees and laughed about it. And <laughs> uh, some guys that uh, were there worked for our uh, old organization, Corwin Automotive Group, based out of North Dakota, and said, hey, man, if you got enough stones to tell people you're unemployed and laugh about it, you should get into the car business. And as the story I've told is just, I just laughed and said, that's not what I went to school for. So <laughs> no thanks, but no thanks. And then I, I thought about it and I talked to my girlfriend, now wife at the time. And she's like, well, heck, if they're going to give you a job. Uh, yeah. And that's, you know, a mindset of the car business too. Hey, I'm going to do this for a little bit, right? make a whole lot of money, you think, and then I'm going to get a job at a factory or the state or something that's more secure. And I think that, you know, people watching this, that if you're just, you know, a lay person or you, you're at work for a municipality or something. I mean, if you get into sales, it's going to open a lot of doors, doors for you. But, but people, people, people get in for the short, yeah, people get in for the short term like that. And yeah. that's, that's one of the reasons that turnover is so, is so rapid in the car business. 70% of new yeah. sales people leave that, that yeah. job within the, in the first year, but the way, with, with the, with the internet and the way you can build connections now and build this database yeah. of, of customers, um, you can start, you can, you can get into business and build something for the long haul that you can, you know, I tell people you can right. build a platform that you can fish from for the next 20 or 30 years. And, uh, that's what you're yeah. doing. And you've got a digital app that you use that, uh, that you use to connect yeah. and build your database and build your personal marketing network. Right. Tell us about that and how you use that. Yeah, I met, you know, really kind of what changed my career about four or five years ago. I was just Googling salespeople on YouTube. And uh, I thought, man, maybe I should have a YouTube channel. All oh, people think that's weird or crazy or whatever. Right. And then all of a sudden, all these people pop up, Nate D. Allen, Elisa Kephart, Mike Davenport, some of the big names in the car business that I met, you know, five or six years ago networking. I was like, man, these people, people are watching these videos and clicking them and commenting them. And then I connected with them and they were all good, wholesome, non-crazy, you know, snake oil salespeople like mm -hmm. some people can be. And so I, through that, I met Dana Croft and she works for a company called CardCap and uh, it's, they have it for insurance agents, for realtors, for car people. Uh, I'm sure if you had like a restaurant or something, you could probably make it some kind of online menu ordering service, but it's a uh, very affordable, it's around $400 a year. Uh, yeah. you, as everyone says, you just got to sell a couple more cars and it pays for itself. So yeah. I've had that app now for three, almost four years, be four years uh, at the end of the year. And it's paid for itself. And it tells me when people click on it and people can make calculations, they lose my number or whatever, and they've got the app. So it allows them to call me or talk to me. They can uh, submit an inquiry to check and see if they have recalls. Uh, and then I get an alert says they're checking to see if they have any recalls and I can call them and talk to them. And it just, it's just another layer of convenience that I offer my customers that really, I don't think anyone in my market, maybe within an hour or two, I don't know of anyone really in Missouri that's, that's using, using that in the car business. I, I had a friend that was using it, but he's not in the car business anymore. So, and, and, and just, just solving the problems, a big, a big part of follow up in the car business. And uh, j you talked about this and I've talked with other salespeople about that is getting people to follow up with you. If you become the go-to guy, if you become their source, you get, you might get a phone call at midnight every once in a while, but it's, right always going to pay off in the long haul. Right. Absolutely. So um, we're, when we leave, this is the Get You Some Radio Show, and I do it every week, and uh, most every week, every week-ish. <laughs> and I, uh, it's for salespeople and entrepreneurs, for car salespeople and car dealerships, but it's for a lot of entrepreneurs. And it's about selling more stuff, obviously, but it's also about building a better life, building a better business by building mm -hmm. a better you. And it's about creating health, happiness, and prosperity in your life and in the lives of those around you. So Nathan, I ask every guest, I promise, I, promise the, uh, I promise the listeners every week that if they'll spend 25 minutes with us, we'll give them one action step, one thing that they can walk away with today to start building a better life today. So if you're giving advice to anyone, anywhere, Nathan, what's one thing they could do today to start? I'm gonna, I'm, can I give you three? Is that allowed? You, you, do, you do you, baby. Okay. I'm going to give you three because I think these are things that not a lot of people are doing. Two of them are going to be really quick. One of them I'm going to elaborate on. The first thing that I learned from Michael Mayer, it was a book that I read, and this will tie into my others, uh, called Seven Levels of Communication. He sets up Google, Google alerts. 
So I set up, you just go to google.com, I think it's backslash alerts, and then you can be emailed for different alerts. So in the car business, or I'm sure in insurance and banking and real estate, the customer sometimes will come in and they're more educated than you. What Google Alerts has allowed me to do is I type in Honda, Hyundai, Nissan, and Kia are the four brands we have, and then I have three or four of our competitors. I get an email, uh, usually every other day, every night. It tells me anytime those things are in the news uh, in Google. Yeah. So if Hyundai releases, hey, we're going to really make the Santa Cruz pickup truck, Jimmy Smith may come in in two weeks and say, Nathan, did you know that the, I can already, I mean, I'm not going to be like a jerk about it and say, I already knew that, but yeah. I can stay on top of the game because I get little news alerts. Same with your competition. Same with, you know, I don't sell Toyota, but if Toyota comes out, I, I saw the Toyota RAV4 uh, 2018 or 19 release, you know, the second it was on the internet. So I already right. knew that they were also refreshing the Tucson. So yeah. little things like that to make you more prepared for yourself, be more educated, be more professional and help with uh, help, you know, on the computer if you got some downtime because it just puts it all in an email really easy to read. As I alluded to earlier, that that book, Seven Levels of Communication, I learned it in that book. That was the first book I read in 2012. I joined a networking group. You can start one with your friends. I would recommend doing that. Yeah, uh, that was the first book recommended to me. I hated reading growing up. I still probably hate reading. <laughs> I got an Audible. Uh, I got an Audible subscription. I'm like a, a bronze member, or whatever. So I get two to three credits a month, and I like to network with other authors. Uh, so one of the things that I took away four years ago, Christopher Lockhead came out with a book, um, and it talks about basically don't try to be the best because everyone says they're the best. Mm -hmm. You want to be so. As a salesperson, you hear all these people, I'm the best, I'm number one, nobody can beat me, whatever. Uh, up until about a year ago, I never said that I was number one in sales. I always said that I was number one in referrals because I would. Right. And I thought that gave me better street cred in the market by telling people I'm number one in referrals, A, because it was true, and B, like if you're a salesperson, you had a business card that said you're like honest and uh polite and intelligent my mom told me no one's ever going to believe that like, right you're a salesperson nobody believes that you're honest so don't put that on a business card because if you have to say you are you ain't yes so uh chris lockhead one of his books um they talked about basically he has a new book called niche down it talks about basically being a niche in your market and being different not better if you're different that gives you a lot better top of the mind awareness. And that's something that I didn't even know six years ago when I started saying I was number one in referrals. I didn't know how much that would explode my business. Yeah. And to give you a point of reference, last month I sold 24 cars. Uh, 11 of those were repeat customers. 11 or uh, 12 of them were uh, referrals to me. And then I had one fresh up. So I literally said 23 my, out of 24. I literally sit at my desk and play on Facebook and just follow up with people. And my friends are like, you talk to so many people on Facebook. It's way <laughs> People just come in and ask for me. It's easy. Yeah. So kind of, so Google alerts. Uh, if you do not have a large community Facebook group, this is my third one. Uh, we have a group called JC Mo, the good, bad and giving. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a group that I started about five years ago. It's got 26,000 people in it. Anyone who's looking for a hairstylist, realtor, they want to know who can help install an electric fence at their house. Someone needs a new deck. They're looking for a car. Uh, they want to know, you know, if there's a traffic on the bridge, what the weather's like on the west side of town, why their internet's down, whatever. I got 25,000 people. It's free publicity. Anytime anyone in that hypersensitive community of my 50,000 person population hometown has a question about goods or services, they can find it. And then yeah. I have the opportunity to refer other people. And then, of course, people see that, that I'm not just seeking referrals. I'm actually giving referrals out. Right. And then usually people that have never bought a car from me or never talked to me, they'll say, well, I always see Nathan Hayes get tagged here. I've always heard good things about Nathan Hayes. And so then when someone asks about buying a used car or a new car or who can I talk to about this, I get tagged a whole bunch more because I'm top of the mind awareness a group of 25,000 people every single day. And there's, I mean, there's like 90,000 comments and likes every month in the group. Yeah. So it's a ton of free publicity. So if you're not in a group like that, I would make one uh, because it is the, definitely the talk 
of your town. So that's my three things. Google well, Alerts, go. read a whole bunch of books and get to know a bunch of authors because you'll learn a bunch of free stuff from them while it costs you money for the book. <laughs> but books is cheap. Books is cheap. Starting a Facebook community, uh, definitely for sure, will change, we'll change your life and change your business for sure. Now you have your, your, your I'll, I'll ask you this real quick before we go, but you have the, um, the community group, but it's not a buy sell group. I see a lot of these that are buy sell. It's like a little, a little traders, you know, traders. Yeah, it, it's buy. not. Yeah. We don't allow pictures to be posted of someone's home for sale or garage sale right. or whatever else. It is just people seeking professionals. They want a referral. They want to complain about KFC closing yeah. 15 minutes early, like little ticky tack things as a business or as a business owner. It allows you, uh, if someone complained the other day about they get their, got their title in 20 days instead of 15 days from our dealership. I can go on there. I can take a picture of the thing. I can send it to my bosses. I can answer the questions. I can say, hey, without giving away too much private information for someone on the internet in front of other people, we can acknowledge that, uh, that complaint right away. Yeah. Because they say only 5% of complaints online are seen by the business yeah and so if you give someone a place to voice a concern or complaint uh, uh, people will go to there because they want attention and they want sympathy All right. it builds your loyalty and it makes you look really good and makes you look like you're being a good listener in front of those communities and that's another book jay bear hug your haters jay. absolute rock star yeah. book if you're in uh in in any sort of uh, reputation management at all so Nathan thank you so much I appreciate you taking the time hey, yeah thank you back man, it was now, great. If, if, if someone needed a new Honda a new Nissan a new Hyundai a new Kia or a new used pre-owned vehicle somewhere around Jeff City Missouri how do they get in touch with you how do they tell someone how to get I'll tell in you touch? don't don't look for Nate ask for Nate but you can find me any of the at symbol ask for Nate on Facebook is my business page Twitter, Instagram, you can call my cell phone, 573-353-9727. If you're a salesperson out there and you just want to connect and network and, uh, you know, not try to sell me uh, stuff, uh, we can definitely connect because I, I like talking to other people and, and helping people. And I, I know that I, I will go back and watch other shows on this because I have already and I know I'll learn something. And so I think that if as a community as salespeople, if we can all help teach each other and, and then improve the reputation of the salesperson, I think that that'll make uh, everyone, everyone better for sure. Get and I appreciate some. you, Terry, for doing this. Yeah. Absolutely. Get you some. Thank you, Nate. Appreciate you, buddy. We'll see you next time. Hey, thanks. Have a good one. Get you some radio. You've been listening to the Get You Some Radio Show. Subscribe today at terrylancaster.tv to hear more episodes, win valuable cash and prizes, and get free training to help you create an army of buyers who know, like, and trust you before they've ever even met you. It's a big, wide world, boys and girls. Get out there and get you some.